down, no back down, coming up. Rise up, no rise up, showing up. You're locked down, no locked down, coming up. Hey everyone, it's Ivan with... What? No? We're not doing the control of virus anymore? Are you kidding me? It's riot season already? Dang, dog. Still have my COVID decorations up. Well, hey everyone, it's Ivan, KipAdra.com, here to bring you another review today, talking about this. This is the KR9 by Kalashnikov USA. If you're unfamiliar with the KR9, it is the VTAS. And if you're unfamiliar with the VTAS, which I may or may not be pronouncing correctly, it is basically Russia's version of the MP5. A AK, scaled down and chambered in 9mm. So this one is, as I mentioned, by Kalashnikov USA. And if you're unfamiliar with them, they are a manufacturer here in the States, over in Florida, making all kinds of different Russian guns to include AKs, as well as this guy right here. And there are some unique things about them as well as this gun. We're going to start with some of those differences. So if you're unfamiliar with AKs, there's all sorts of weird import-export laws to where, hey, you can import this, but it has to be like chopped in half and pieces, destroyed, then you can piece it back together, or it needs to have X amount of parts made here in the US. Weird stuff for the sake of State Department being weird. But what is unique here? Well, Kalashnikov USA, two different things. One, they actually have the data package. So if you remember back in the day when Everyone was kind of getting into the AR game. Everything was, well, we started with this Colt, little receiver, and upper receiver, and we measured it out, and we kind of made it from there. So you had tolerance stacking, all these different things. Nobody really had the blueprint. And with AKs, again, like people are going off of like known goods and just working backwards from there. Well. Kalashnikov USA actually has like the data package, the blueprint for this, as well as other guns. So they have a known good, like starting point. And with that, rather than importing pretty much anything for these, everything's actually made in house. Rivets, little screws, sights, like all of it is made in house, which is pretty cool. Everything be made here in the US. All of that said, this is basically the VTAS. If you were able to get magazines from Russia, they would work flawlessly. All that stuff, dimensionally, it's all pretty much the same. They did, however, take a couple liberties and arguably improve this a little bit. What do I mean? Well, up here, this muzzle device, you can actually unthread it. Half by 28 threads. What does that mean? It means you can probably use stuff you may already have. By way of example, I have a three lug adapter from Liberty Suppressors. Throw that thing on here, and I've shot this with both the Mystic X as well as Infinity X. It's awesome. It is a lot of fun to shoot this suppress. And I'm gonna charge One, it for you, okay? Two, three. Go ahead and put the dot on, and when you're ready, you can shoot. Another nice thing is this Piccadilly top rail is actually mounted onto the dust cover and it's hinged. So if you go to perform any maintenance, anything like that, this comes up, do whatever you need to do. But this doesn't really move much comparatively to like the dust covers that slide all the way out. It's basically hinging here. So with respect to the actual accuracy of this, opening it, closing it, you're not going to lose zero with respect to what this thing's intended role and how you'd probably be using it anyway. Which brings us to how have I used this gun? Well, I had the good fortune of going out and doing some training with Bill Rapier of Amtac Shooting, and we basically went over a bunch of kind of compact carbine deployment, both from the vehicle as far as engaging threats, front-facing, rear-facing, right, left side, 
as well as actually deploying this gun out of a bag. So got a lot of reps in with Bill Rapier and then went, actually put all that stuff to practice on the range. With respect to my experience with this over a course of about a thousand rounds or so, how's it done for me? It's done pretty good. It is, it's fun to shoot. Most of the time it's using this little MRD V2 by Attaball through this guy on here. I will say not specific to this, but I hate AK sights. That rear blade with a post, I mean, Red Rider BB guns come with that. Not a fan. I, again, not a detractor from this KR9, just AKs in general. Terrible sighting system. But ended up shooting most of the time with this guy on here. Did a good job. I, yeah, I had fun with this. Did I run into any malfunctions? A couple. Occasionally, I would get something to where it would be hung up right here, and a piece of brass would be basically stuck in the ejection port not sure exactly what caused that only happened maybe two or three times out of that thousand rounds or so and i don't remember if it was like hey it was the ammo that was causing that malfunction or not i did have another malfunction that ironically happened while i was filming my accuracy testing with this which we'll get to in a second but as far as that malfunction went i got to the point where for whatever reason it wasn't like stripping that next round, like it was getting hung up and I'm like, ah, that's kind of weird. And so I was playing with it, trying to fight through it. And then finally, like I couldn't move the charging handle at all. Pulled the thing apart and a, well, the double-edged sword of AKs. So with AKs you have like, oh, they're super reliable. Like you can throw them in sand and mud. And yeah, because the tolerances are really loose and yeah, that's great, awesome. But because those tolerances are really loose, something that can happen is you can actually get shell casings in pretty weird places. And so what had happened is a shell casing had dropped down and eventually made its way to where I couldn't pull the charging handle back because it was basically behind where the hammer is gonna reset. So I'd pull it back and it gets stopped, pulled it out, pulled everything out from inside, got that shell casing out, kept on running. But as far as accuracy, I threw a, I believe, Bushnell 4 to 16 on there, one of their forged scopes, threw it on this little guy and shot a number of five shot groups just at 50 yards. Why not 100? Because application, like this thing's basically MP5 for Russia. So with that, gonna be used at pretty short ranges. Again, going back, shooting nine mil. Eh, figured 50 yards would probably be pretty indicative. So at 50 yards with some glass on this, this thing more or less benched, here's what I ended up getting. Shooting some full stop hollow points, solid copper by G9 Bullets. First group came in at 2.66 MOA. And my second group came in at 2.68 MOA. 
Switching over to some Montana Gold hollow points by G9 Bullets. First group coming in at 7.53 MOA with a wild flyer. My second group again with a wild flyer coming in at 7.13 MOA. I think after looking at some of the footage, the barrel may have actually ended up contacting the rest on one of those shots in the both groups. Trying out some SIG 124 grain training ammunition. Came in at 5.23 MOA. And my second group coming in at 4.25 MOA with that SIG training ammo. Moving over to SIG V-Crown jacketed hollow points. First group coming in at 5.67 MOA. My second group, managed to clean it up, came in at 2.21 MOA. What does all that mean? It means if you do your part with some good ammo, you take that hostage shot, because that's obviously your paradigm, at like 50 yards and you're good to go. Even though you're probably gonna shoot cardboard probably at 25 yards at indoor range, but capable. Now, honestly, this thing shoots, it's fun. As far as that accuracy, I'm sure someone can get more out of it. That's why we got out there that day with that ammo. One thing I will say that's pretty cool is Kalashnikov USA actually made a backpack for it. So you have your straps here, you have a waist belt, sleeve back here, Velcro enclosure, all these outer pockets, and then your main compartment folds back, pull this guy out. This one, of course, being the SBR with the folding triangle stock. They also have a version that is a pistol with a triangular folding brace, but inside here, it's all padded. You have these pieces, which you can actually Velcro this into place if you don't want it shifting around at all on you, and a pocket down here where the muzzle will actually slide in. And then the other pocket of importance is the second largest. And if you unzip this, come back, and four magazines right across there, which is pretty cool. One thing I don't care for, I will say, with this pocket though, is there's only one zipper. So rather than having two zippers where you could keep it upright, and just unzip it both at the same time, or for that matter, unzip it whatever direction you want to. You have to unzip it from here all the way around to access those magazines. Also, speaking of magazines, this right here actually works really good. Did some shooting with these. These are the Blue Force Gear MP7 magazines, or magazine pouches rather, 10 speed, and they will fit the KR9 mags. So if you, have a need for or you just want to be able to carry magazines on your person you can throw these on there super low pro when the mags are out and they hold them very secure overall with my experience with this gun what are my thoughts i think it's a fun gun it honestly is it is a lot of fun to shoot especially suppressed everything's fun to shoot suppressed especially nine mil but no this is a lot of fun to shoot and price wise about 1200 bucks Dimensionally, you're looking at, I think, just under 28 inches extended with it folded, just over 18 inches, like nine and a quarter inch barrel, 30 round magazines. I will say, if you are used to like Glock magazines and stuff, so much nicer to load, way, way nicer. But overall, it's just a fun gun. Like I said, this being the SBR version, they also have a pistol version with a folding brace. And they also have a 16 inch barrel and they even make 10 round magazines if you're in somewhere where you don't have freedom. So there's that for you also. But if you end up picking one up and have some experience with it, let me know how it's done for you. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. Yeah, totally. Me too, man. I've uh, really been looking forward to just, you know, like hanging out and doing cool stuff together. So let's do this, man.